when Galway was a walled city, fortified city. The Claddagh was a fishing village on the far side of the river. It was in existence long before Galway uh, was built. The people of the Claddagh are very, very proud of their heritage. Uh, you know, if you ask somebody where do they come from, if they're from the Claddagh, they would say they come from the Claddagh in Galway. They'd never say they come from Galway and the Claddagh. They'd always put their homeland first of all. The ring itself, without the crown, was very, very popular in the Mediterranean area. Going back to Roman times, they were called fide, or fidelity rings. The people from the Clada adopted the ring as a kind of a symbol of their own community, being very, very close-knit. It more or less a kind of a, an identification that they were from, uh, from Clada. They would call them heart and hand rings. The hands stand for friendship. The heart stands for uh, love and the crown stands for loyalty between two people and the motto of the ring from over the years is that love and friendship reign. It does a specific way to wear the ring. Basically if you wear the ring with the heart pointing towards you it means that you're spoken for and if you wear it the other way around the heart pointing uh, away from you it means that you're available. A lot of uh, American teenagers now have latched onto them. Was there a TV program called Buffy the Vampire Slayer or something like that? Seemingly she wore a clad ring and this kind of kicked it off. It's the identification of being Irish. If you're wearing a clad ring, you've got an Irish connection. And of course now with all the, the young people emigrating to uh, Australia, New Zealand, the States, they want to bring this identification with them. They're proud of the fact that they're Irish. Seemingly there was a, over 200 clatterings found in the, the ruins of the Twin Towers. It was one way of identifying people. It's a very distinctive, uh, distinctive ring, easily recognised. And we had a, a, a lady come in about two years afterwards and she had her husband's clattering she wanted to donate it to our museum here. And uh, I think he was actually a fireman. He wasn't actually working in, in the Twin Towers at the time. It was one of our rings that her husband had worn. She was quite emotional about it, kind of broke down in tears. I, it was obvious something very, very heavy had fallen on this ring. And it was, uh, it had been caught at the back. So it had obviously taken off, uh, taken off a dead body. And uh, she really wanted to leave the ring here. I just thought that the ring was part of her family, was a part of her family heirloom and like it should remain with the, with the family. We eventually talked her into taking it back home. Uh, we straightened it out a wee bit here for her and polished it up and at least she could wear it. There was people, people that were never found that were there. They know they were there and they were never found afterwards. It just goes to show you, you know, it's, the, the ring is all over the world.